Hi everyone, welcome back to week four. What we're going to do for our final week is we've already free motioned our placemat. We're going to bind it, put our buttonholes in, our buttons on, and finish it up. All right, we're just going to trim this up right close to our stitches that we did. Try and get as close as you can, but don't cut into them. This will all be buried under your binding. to get you to keep your circle shape as much as possible. Use a good pair of scissors. And then we're going to put our buttonhole on. You don't have to use the buttonhole. You can use just looped, what I have here, but you'll have to put that in with your binding, but I'll show you how to do that. I'll get fiddle with that later. All right. Now I want to try and get about a halfway point. This. This is my buttonhole foot. You put your button up at the top, and you put your, it slips into your underfoot here. I'll show you how mine comes out. Or like that. Okay. I'm just gonna make sure your settings are correct on your machine for your buttonhole. <clears throat> and I think I'd like to put mine over on about this side. So I'm gonna lift my foot. Mine has to go between a stabilizer plate, but that's just the way my machine is. And then just stitch away. Put your buttonhole in. Oops, I forgot to put down the bar. That's correct. There's a very important bar here to help stabilize it and uh, let it know when it's reached its end for the button size. In just a few seconds, you got yourself a buttonhole. Try to have your buttons around the same size. So no matter which place Matt is in which order, they'll always loop together. I have a different size, a couple of different size buttons. And then there's a bunch of different varieties that you could use here if you didn't want to use your buttonholes, you can use that ribbon. All right, just cut my threads. All righty, I'll show you real quick how to put your binding on. To finish off our place mats, we need to bind it with binding or bias tape. It's pretty much the same thing. It comes in a package like this, many different colors. I'll be using blue and black and white and pretty much clean up whatever I have. I prefer to go on the back side first and then flip over and stitch on the front. So I don't want I'm going to come a little bit down from where I have my buttonhole. So you don't always see where you're sewing your binding onto from one project to the next. I probably should switch out my colored thread here. Just one second. It's too dark for what I was looking for. I don't want to see the threads. Sorry, one moment. Alright, and just do a nice little straight stitch and sew your binding on. And because it's circular, I'll give you a little tip at the end. I'll give you a little tip at the end on how to help it lie flat. Alright, so just a nice little straight stitch all the way around, following the curve.
my end there. I didn't sew it down because you know, I'm going to do a little fold, so I want to make sure I come past that. Okay. I'm going to fold this one down, come across with this one, and then pretty much seal those two raw edges within the binding seam itself. Stitch and cut threads. All right, now this is where a little tip comes in. Get a pair of sharp scissors. Make sure you don't cut into where you just stitched. But you want to give yourself a couple, well, every couple inches, a couple of relief cuts. Because once that gets turned around, flipped and turned, you don't want to come up and bow like this because it'll just make up any little placemat holes. So just clip that and then sew the other side down. Make sure you're getting your binding as well because that's pretty much what's hindering from laying flat. You may have to do a little bit more than what I'm doing here, but this just gives you the idea of what you need to do. done our project though. I've had so much fun, <laughs> pun intended, working with everybody. All right, so I'm just going to tuck this here, do a little fold over, get your little safety pin or your pins out if you need to help you with your binding. Okay. Take your time to make sure it looks good. Hold. Sorry, I'm being a little stubborn, of course, because you know, that's the way things go. Alright. And wait till it's getting out that side, and then we'll tuck it under. There we go. And then just work your way around. If you have those little binding clips, those are fantastic too. I don't have any, but I've seen them. You just want to work yourself around and just stitch your little binding down. Okay? I'll put in a few pins here and then I'll start stitching. Should be able to hold it down as I go. It's just that where it's connecting here, I want to make sure it really got connected and I'm not going to miss those stitches and have it come undone. You've had as much fun as I have making something spring, spring like to get us over the winter blah. Right. Oh, and on this side, I'll show you is where you would put your ribbon if you didn't want to do a buttonhole, okay? This is what you do. Just take your nice little thin ribbon or string or yarn or whatever it is you're wishing to do, tuck it on this side, and then you're gonna stitch it down when you stitch this edge of the binding down. So no matter what, it can loop into your next little project, your next placement, right? If you use a button, or this is where you use your big wackadoodle buttons. That's where they come in handy. Okay, so I will just make sure this one gets a little pinned in there so we don't miss it. Okay. So either buttonhole or ribbon, either way, looks really good. And if you use the ribbon, it's an easy way to hang them up. If you hang them up on the wall on a peg or something like that, just loop them through the ribbon. I'm just going to fix this a little bit here before I stitch it down. I want all of those raw edges tucked under. Okay. Almost there. Oops, can I get that pin? I think it's time to upgrade my handles. My pins. Alright. So 
little stubborn, but we got gotcha. you. Okay. It'll be okay there. Now just with a regular straight stitch, take your time and make yourself a circle or go around in the circle. Of course, you made yourself a circle. It's right here. Alrighty. I like to come up just before where my bindings are attached edge to edge, and then that way I know it's it's pretty much done the other way right away. You can use a decorative stitch, a zigzag, a straight, whichever you like. There's many on your machine that you could use. I will just use a straight stitch to show you. But I have I have done zigzag, and I think they look really nice. Okay, now when you take your pin out, make sure you've got all your edges because you don't want to sew over your pins. The machine will not like it at all. Alright, and slow and steady, butter yourself around. And don't forget to get that ribbon. to make sure you cut your buttonhole open but not cut through what you've just stitched by using one of your pins here and your seam ripper. somebody's table to do it. <laughs> show you the way to do this so you don't worry about cutting past. So on the side away from you, because you always cut away from you, put your little pin right before those end stitches and go right up in between yep. and down on the other side. Okay. And then up again. Okay. And then what you do, stop poking yourself from the underside, just come through with your seam ripper. Okay, and just cut all the way down to the pin. And then that way you don't go through, you just go right to. See, look, you're not going to ruin it, what you just did. So perfect. Pop your button through, and you're ready to go for your next placemat. Thanks for joining me. 